Thanks. Christy Lou Stout is in Hong Kong. She joins us now live with the latest. Good to see you, Christy. So after a dismal day on Wall Street, how are Asian markets looking right now? And of course, futures. Yeah, Asian markets are really feeling that downward pressure, especially after U.S. shares posted its biggest daily decline in two years. Investors are just spooked by inflation. They're also spooked by weak earnings, especially what we heard from Target. You know, this is the latest big box retailer to come out with really poor earnings results, saying that its quarterly profit fell a stunning 52 percent. It blamed two factors. It blamed inflation, saying that consumers simply are not buying as many many non-essential goods as before. It also blamed um, the situation with the global supply chain. And all roads, of course, lead back to China. In fact, we heard from the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Wednesday, and she said that China's zero COVID policy and the ongoing lockdowns there may be playing a role in impeding the global supply chain. Let's take one more look. Let's bring it up with the freshest data that we have right now of what the Asian trading day looks like at the moment. And it's been in the red all day. If we could bring up the data for you, you could see the Seoul Kospi is down one the third, Australia S&P losing about 1.7 percent, Nikkei down 1.9 percent, Shai Composite relatively flat. It had been trading lower earlier. Here in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng losing about 2.4 percent. I should add that in China, there's been a lot of concern about the growth prospect of China's tech industry, especially after Tencent. This is the mega tech company that makes the WeChat messaging platform. It's the world's biggest video game maker. It reported zero revenue growth in the first quarter. You know, also from Asia, we're keeping an eye on U.S. futures to just get an inkling of what the trading day is going to look like on Wall Street in a few hours from now. Um, earlier, we were seeing a bit more positivity, but take a look at it right now. S&P 500 futures down two-tenths of one percent. Nasdaq futures losing four-tenths of one percent. The Dow futures down about two-tenths of one percent. Over the last month, markets had been hammered after the U.S. Federal Reserve had been giving out the signals that it would be regularly hiking interest rates by half a percentage point, all in a bid to tame inflation, which is at its highest level since the 1980s. But now we're hearing from you know various analysts, including Nomura, saying that they anticipate the Fed to be more aggressive in its tightening going forward. In fact, they anticipate that they will be tightening or raising interest rates by three quarters of one percent in June and July. I want to bring up the statement for you. This is from the head of global markets research for Nomura Securities, who says this, quote, we recognize Fed speak has not outright endorsed a 75 basis point hike yet. But in this high inflation regime, we believe the nature of Fed forward guidance has changed. It has become more data dependent and nimble, unquote. Now, the chief economist at Deutsche Bank says that the Fed could raise um, interest rates all the way up to 5 percent. And Rosemary, that would be the highest level since 2006. Back to you. Yeah, amazing. Christy Lustow joining us live from Hong Kong. Many thanks. You're welcome.